You know, folks, there's a phrase we often say around here, right, Oracle? You know, there's that familiar phrase that we stole from the tape machines, the greatest Twitter account in the world. Mm. The big man is back. We often we say about men of all sizes, of all stature, you know, all, all um, status. But tonight it truly feels fitting. The big man is back. The historical Oracle finally returns. It's been too long, brother. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, just to kind of put uh, put the last six and a half months into perspective, seven months maybe even. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Uh oh, breaking up some. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible start here in the return of the historical oracle it appears. Okay, I think you're back. Yeah. I think you're back. Yeah. I think you're okay, back. I'm back. Okay. Yeah. I was like, it's either me or and then I was like, okay, I'm talking and Joe can't. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, she sounds good. Go ahead, bro. Okay, okay. God damn it. Uh the internet. Let's go ahead, bro. Keep cooking. <sighs> Fuck cricket. Oh, I mean <laughs> Well, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let's make it clear what we're discussing when we say cricket, bro. You know what I mean? The the phone company. This, yeah, absolutely. Fuck them. All right, carry on, <laughs> Oracle. <What do> <laughs> that, uh, that was my uh, brother Drew. May he rest in peace. That was his phone voicemail for years when he had cricket because he hated them. And so his voicemail <laughs> was fuck, fuck cricket. cricket. <laughs> Tremendous. Um, Tremendous stuff. But, uh, anyways. Um, <clears throat> Oh. Oh. Uh, folks, we oh. have, folks, we have a situation on our hands here. We may have to draft in Bob O'Neill to talk us through 2003 SmackDown. This is a long yeah, time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> are you, right, Bob, you, come in are, you, are you actually back now? <laughs> Am I? We may, we may just sit here for an hour while Bob fumbles through his ruthless aggression notes. Am I what we have to do? I don't know, folks. Can you hear could me? We, we could be in some dangerous territory. You sound good now. You you broke up again. We'll see mm. if you if you uh, if you yeah, stay I'm with back, us this I'm time. I'm back in the back bedroom, and I feel like I've had mm -hmm. the biggest issues back here. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's try this for a third time. Let's try this. Just try this. It's highly time. entertaining. Yeah, so. I think so. Slightly <laughs> alarming, but also entertaining, which is real matters most. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> 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 This is this is actually this is this is our own um, in your house. Beware of dog. Fair, yes, indeed, indeed. We talked about last summer. Mm -hmm. um, so I was frustrated with myself for not being able to like keep up. But then you know, football season happened, American football. And the more I thought about it over time, I think it's actually quite healthy and good that I didn't. I agree. Keep going, 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 because I think I would have like not wanted to, to finish at all. Mm -hmm. And it was good to take. I mean, I probably took four, four and a half months off, five, probably five months off, honestly. Yeah. Probably for the best, uh, you said. You know, we, yeah, and that's going to happen again, you know, mm -hmm. as, it, as it gets more difficult to uh, try and power through this stuff. But um, I've made my way to the latter half of December 96. So we should at least have some episodes of uh, Historical Oracle in the can yeah. um, coming up through. Uh, spring and, and uh an early summer i think so uh of of, of this year but <clears throat> hopefully hopefully i can get into the middle of 97 before i take another long break which i should i i should be able to um but uh as, as things start to uh slow down in terms of uh football off on the yeah. weekend for a few months so yeah. um but yeah uh I've I've powered through a bunch. I've powered through the fall of '96, big time. Uh, to discuss, bro. Heating up, mm -hmm. uh, very exciting. Um, but when we last left off, uh, it was the summer of '96, and uh, the NWO angle was 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 starting to form and develop, but had not fully heated up and had not fully hit that 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 breaking point. Mm -hmm. Um. Shawn Michaels was 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 in the midst of 
being the World Wrestling Federation champion and Indeed. was quite right over. Uh, he's still very over at the end of 96, but that's not it. Things have changed very differently. Indeed. The year with Brett returning and the crowd reaction. And, and of course, it was New York, but that 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 industry reaction was very telling and you know we'll we'll eventually get the uh, get to that discussion but ECW uh had a really great summer in 96 and we'll touch on that here some i thought they dipped some in the fall and 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 we'll and we'll uh discuss that uh in the future of course but um ECW really has a has a big month that we're going to discuss here in July and of course WWF kind of kind of stays the course there's a few there's there's one particular moment that's pretty big um that happens that will you know that will have uh uh, some big uh big discussion on but of course wcw has uh an earth shattering month yeah uh that's probably going to take up uh, a large portion of the night i think but uh i think that's that's kind of my i know i kind of jumped ahead and went ahead and started giving the giving the little bit of a preview and rundown and i also kind of wanted to talk for a long time to see how my uh, my yeah. connection would do, and it pretty could still good. go poorly. Yeah. We'll see. That's yeah, pretty good. It's but, pretty good. I, as you know, usually we do start this with me kind of asking you to set the scene. So you did that perfectly there. Before we move on, I want to shout out Crokey, who, um, who cheered 100 bits. Also, a couple of subscriptions. We have JR, um, good brother JR, who's been with us now for nine whole months. Same thing goes for Crokey, who I just mentioned. We appreciate both you fellas very, very much. I know this has been, um, you know, people ask about the historical oracle regularly. Oracle. I know you you're not aware of this at all when it doesn't even pop you much, but on solos, like people will say, "When's it coming back?" And <laughs> you know, I, you know, we always had that kind of mindset of it's not going to go anywhere, right? We will get to it when we get to it. Mm-hmm. But people love this show; they look forward to it. And I think it's probably one of our strongest shows in terms of just podcast only, to which people like very much. So, right, right. Um, we're happy to be back. And as you said, we're not starting slow in terms of the month we're kicking off with our kind of comeback here, right? I mean, right. one of the most significant moments in wrestling history is it's going to be covered here. Month, uh, we yeah. kind of ended June 96 at a perfect time and picking back mm-hmm. up. So, yeah, I'm with you. Oh, my God. a and are doing the NWO deal. Oh, no. Hogan's going to put up 50 I watched, on that thing. I watched <laughs> the Peacock vid on, on Hogan's heel turn or whatever it was, mm-hmm. you know, a year ago, whatever, when they put that out, and it was just yeah. total horse shit. And, like, I hate what they – I hate the, the, the rooms they shoot the shit in. <laughs> like, you'll have them – and then, like, you know those movies where they have, like, big time, like, drug dealers meet up in, like, these empty warehouses and cities? Was that the – They look like where they are. Was that the series that was called, like, Evil? So is that the – Yeah. Hills? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking to Hulk Hogan about evil. Incredible. That's the um, one with that great Randy Orton clip. That was pretty beast. You know, he was like yeah. freaking out and spazzing it. Yeah, that was good shit. Yeah. Um, he was explaining it. Yeah. He might be back soon, Oracle. I, I don't hear know. looking for them. He looking looking for them, uh, them boots. Indeed. It'll be very, very interesting to see what happens. But anyway, back to 1996. Massive, massive month ahead. Let's dive straight into it. Um, WCW. Takes the month again. This is their third straight win in our kind of, you know, you rank each week, right? For those of you that have not that have not um, watched those before, we do encourage you to go back and and uh, go for the previous episodes. Basically, Oracle picks a best show of each week, and then for each promotion, he picks a best match, promo, and angle. So you'll kind of get that format as we go here, kind of loosely. Um, WCW, their first straight win. That's a surprise to no one who's even slightly aware of this era. This is their time, right? It's a golden era for that promotion. Yeah. This specifically is like an iconic stretch of TV at Disney and all that comes with that. They maximize that setting and then some. Um, but in the first week of July, we dive into Bash of the Beach. And this is saying that's been covered everywhere for it for the last 26 years, right? Over 26 years now. But man, when you watch this stuff in order and you have like some context, he still packs one hell of a punch, doesn't Oracle? This deal, oh, yeah. Hogan closing the show, talk us through it. So much to get into. This, this is this is one of those eras, and I know it's. Let me let me preface this by saying that it happened. You know, no nobody can 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 control when they're born, but this is one of those eras where it's like, fuck, man. If if I wasn't just five six seven years older and and probably in your mm-hmm. case joe if you weren't maybe 10 years older you know yeah we could we could you know we we could have seen this and 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 experienced it and it's it's 
it's silly you know when you become such a nerd about this it's almost a I'm bummer with you, bro. i'm with it, you yeah. it's almost a bummer it's like fuck man i, I really wanted to yeah. see this stuff mm -hmm. like in in you know in 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 time and, and there is something to be said from Meltzer, who always says it and sometimes it frustrates me but i think it's fair that there's nothing like seeing it when it happens at the time you know yeah yeah like there's there's nothing like oh, living it you know for sure um as 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 a fan um but just just an incredible piece of business this was um this is this is just from secondhand uh stories from from people in my family i remember uh, my brother dylan was in high school at the time and uh he kind of told me you know, he's he's told me about how just kind of the buildup of of Like who that third man's gonna yeah, be? The mystery. Yeah, it was just there was nothing like it. Like the speculation was insane, mm -hmm. and you know we'll we'll briefly cover some of the you know uh, Mabel was rumored, which, <laughs> which, which is which awesome. is one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. like big Big Vis was rumored as 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 the third man, which is one of my favorite. Like, um, yeah. of course. Uh, there's a story that that I believe it was also in in, in uh, Guy Evans Nitro um, that uh, Sting was yes. was was going to be the guy if if Hogan backed out because they told mm -hmm. a great story um, and I I don't, don't want to spoil it too much. Please buy the book; it's amazing. A, one of the best histor <laughs> historical haha <laughs> pun intended <laughs> uh, historical books on wrestling ever. It's um, fabulous. Yeah. Uh, just an absolutely tremendous piece of uh, of, of of work by by uh, by Guy Evans, but um, tells the story of like Hogan going to what was it uh, Kevin Sullivan's condo or yeah because you know, they were scared he was yeah. going to bow right yeah, yeah. like yeah. Kevin like kept yeah. him he held him hostage yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just 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 an incredible deal and and um, when you when you watch when you watch the bash. Um, or bash the beach here. I, it's probably better to say yeah. that because when you, you know when I say that, I think of Great American Bash. Yeah. But um, there's this feeling the whole night, like Gene Okerlund's backstage in the hallway from you know the outsiders' locker room. Like there's just eerie feeling, especially when you watch everything in order. There's a tension. You can you can feel the sort of NWO invasion get worse yep. and worse and worse, and sort of cloud WCW over time. Over over that six week period from Memorial Day until the weekend after Fourth of July, which is when this takes place, right? Mm -hmm. That that big six six week build from from Hall's debut on Memorial Day Nitro until, uh, of course, Hogan turn, uh, which we're talking about at uh, Best of the Beach '96. Just just an incredible, weird feeling. Um, I, I can't imagine what it was like to watch the show live. Yeah. Um, and, and, and another uh, secondhand uh, personal family story. Dylan said this was one of the only shows uh, that 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 my folks ordered um, at uh, at at their house because Dylan's best friend growing up had the black box hmm. where you could scramble everything, yes. you know, and he, and he got it like one of the back pages of whatever. His mom got it for him for Christmas one year. It was like Christmas 94 he got it. And they got every pay per view from like late ninety four until Dylan until it went out when I was visiting him in the middle of two, summer of 07, We were going to see Tito Ortiz versus Ken Shamrock, and it went out. That, My God. It, was, it had been messing up on him. I saw WrestleMania twenty two on that black box. That had a hell of a run, bro. That's mm -hmm. a hell Edge, of a run. I saw Edge Foley, you know, WrestleMania twenty two, Edge Foley, mm -hmm. uh, Triple H Cena main event. Yeah, I saw that on that black box when we visited for incredible. Uh, went to went to condo in Charleston. Uh, Many years ago now, seventeen years ago. God Almighty, um, but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so, but this is for some reason they they ordered it at home, and and uh, my my brother Drew um, was never a big wrestling fan. Um, he was he was the, the one brother who kind of, you know, he 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 went to a lot of famous shows and stuff growing up in South Carolina. But was never like can you, you know he was never into it really I mean he he liked it okay you know as as I mm -hmm. you know as a lot of little you know a lot of little kids right. will like it but he was never a huge fan but he liked Hogan and he had a, and he had a Hogan poster in his room and when uh, <laughs> when 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 Hogan turned heel 
I guess Drew was about 10, maybe, you know, 10 going on 11. He ripped the poster down. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and and Dylan, and Dylan always tells her my mom was like in the room. She was like, Hulk Hogan turned bad. What? <laughs> <laughs> It's incredible, uh, man. It's yeah, amazing. Like, and, and the way and the way they execute it, like with Luger getting knocked out early, and it makes you think that he's mm -hmm. he, you know, he gets he might be the third man. Yeah. Sting's the one who exit. They do it where it looks like Sting could have pu purposely hit him, makes him look like the third yep. man. And I'm and I'm taking this because I was refreshing my memory some, and it's just these are kind of points that I saw put on the on the pro wrestling only message board that I thought were good points, but it's just they it's really masterfully done and yes it's weird because hogan's not really they do a couple of videos like he's american made he's kind of like, in the distance right like, like, like for the most part yeah he's kind of he's, outside they, looking they, they do a couple of music videos and they and they bring him up and at one point uh i may have mentioned this in the june of 96 episode we did but this was, mm -hmm. which was last summer so it's hard to remember but Hall or or Warner Hall or Nash brings him up and goes, "Where's where's yes. Hall, where's Hogan?" You know. Yeah. Um. Of course, by that point, they we we, we got to remember it wasn't totally set in stone. You know, they they weren't sure he was mm -hmm. really you know really going to do it. You know, unless until you wear the red and yellow, dude. <laughs> you you know? yeah, that, that's an <laughs> amazing quote. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um. But uh, just just the way they execute this man and like. When he when he drops the leg on Randy, it's like Heenan. People people dig. He. he I'm one of the this. weird people who will say I actually defend. Oh, dropping oh. that slightly oh, oracle. Oh no. Okay, am I Hold back up. yet? So it seems like you're back. Circle back on the uh, on the heen in front. Circle back to that. It seems like you're back. Yeah, maybe. I gotta fight my internet. I don't know. My computer's making weird noises. I've had this laptop for six years, folks, <laughs> and it's probably time to get a new one. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. It seems like you cleared up. We may just have to battle through this time. You were talking okay. about heen and then you cut out. So we, go, we had a good go 12, 15 minutes there. We did, and we did, we did. It's fine. And things, you know. Um, Jeff asked this earlier, Red Sox Rib. So circle back to uh, the Heenan thing because that's mm -hmm. where you broke yeah. up. Go mm -hmm. ahead, mate. Yeah, yeah. So with the Heenan thing, I'm kind of, I kind of defend Heenan here because <sighs> he does time it poorly. I, I can't argue against that. But I also think it fits with Heenan's character of always hating Hogan. He hates Hogan, yeah. So, like, yeah. I, I know it's, like, the kind of, like, when you're under 13 type kid fan who is able to find ways to explain it away type deal. Not that a kid mm -hmm. would really catch that type of explanation. Oh, but you're, um, yeah, I get yeah, it. I'm it, torn it, on it. I, I feel like, to me, it's a little bit, it never bothered me as much. It used to bother me a lot when he would say it. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't hate it as much now. I think it was just, you know, Heenan, I think the inflection in his voice was probably the worst part about it because you could clearly tell, like, he knew what was up. So that, that did hurt it. I mean, it didn't really hurt it, but, like, it was, you know, if you're watching on the broadcast, it's more of a hindsight, you know, it's more of an in hindsight thing. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I Heenan hated Hogan and, and – um, <laughs> I'm thinking about when he finally grovels to the NWO when they take over Nitro that, that right before Starcade '97. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> After fleeing for like two years, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, just when he drops the leg, man, it's like it's and the moment. reaction. There's like a moment where like the crowd, you can see the crowd where they're all like, like they pop initially, yeah. and then they like realize what's going on. <laughs> and then there's like he drops the leg again and then like people are just fucking mad because they because they because because they can see it it sets in right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. they're like oh shit this piece of shit <laughs> like and like you know because this is there's there's no heel turn quite like this I, I think it's it's the most shocking heel turn in the history of wrestling 
Yeah, this don't have an um, here. Is this the best heel turn in wrestling history? Oh, that's, absolutely. I think it is. Um, I'll go a step further on this oracle, and, I, and obviously, you know, we have a lot to talk about. So feel free to cover this as much or as little deal as you want. But this first block of NWO mm-hmm. feels like to me, and always has for like the best angle story, however you want to frame it, in professional wrestling history. I mm-hmm. truly believe that. You mentioned earlier about the atmosphere on that night, even watching it back without having any of the, you know, the anecdotal evidence. It's like, I can't stress enough, folks, if you've only just seen the turn, that's one thing. But the way they set this up and the level of doubt and the fact that the pieces are already in place because the baby faces have kind of been infighting for most of like the last year. Like Luger's a dick. It's like there's so much going on and WCW feels like it's vulnerable because it's a promotion built on like four top baby faces who all don't like each other to some level or have a weird relationship. And Hogan is the sleeping giant in that thing by the time this whole thing starts rolling. So, like, I don't know, man. I think it feels to me like it's the best angle story ever until, obviously, it falls off the rails. This first block mm-hmm. of it, it's masterful, bro. It really is. Yeah, and it's – and it's it's uh, it, uh, the first – it's weird. Like, a lot of people get more frustrated with the angle. And of course, again, we'll, we'll cover this, you know, certainly, yeah. but a lot of people get more frustrated with it right around the time of Halloween havoc. And right after, mm-hmm. listen, I'm watching this Hogan Piper build. That's one of the best builds to match I've ever seen. He's a hoot, honestly. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. And like, I'm a Piper guy. So like, I like he rambles, but I, he's, yeah, he pops us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, um, I think it's more along the lines that it's the middle of 97 and I've always, the more and more I think about it, it's the peak of the NWO angle, not the peak, but like when it, when it, when it started to go down was actually yeah. I mean, not, yeah, Luger exactly. racked Hogan. That was, that was the, the sort mm-hmm. of, that was like the Mount. Yeah. You know. That was the highest it got, and mm-hmm. then after that, it's all down. Yeah. Yep. And then it just, and then they killed the town, as Flair said, it wasn't Salem, <laughs> with Hennig and like Rage, you know, Age in the Cage, and Randy blowing his knee out, and the awful Star Kid '97. That show's terrible from beginning to end. Just a terrible show. I still don't understand. Um, it's just so know, much about that show. It's wild. Um, just everything about that fall is just. It's but like they were fine, even with the stupid horseman burial, they were fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, that to me, that's that's when things get really ugly. Yeah. Um, and and they were lucky to win in the ratings at well in '98. You know, they were helped by Montreal. Um, you know, and of course they blew that. Um, because people who were watching at the time, Montreal happened. A lot of people thought, oh, you know, WCW's going to get Brett. and eh, you know, they blew that. They blew it. Do so. you agree? I agree with this from Joe, who says, to me, the problem is that Bischoff saw them as a potential second brand as opposed to just a faction of wrestlers with similar charm. I think that taps into it, right? That's, like, that's, that's making a it its very strong point. Yeah. Making it its own roster rather than mm-hmm. it just being an invasion. I understand why you wanted to do it. You had to give them a certain amount of numbers to do that. But, like, good Lord, man, they watered it down so much, right? right. Some of the guys they added. So. I mean, DiBiase just recruited fucking yeah. Bray Wyatt's dad on the last night show I watched. Bray Wyatt's dad is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's terrible, you know. Um, I mean, that wasn't that bad, but it was just—it was silly. It was too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, just and of course the promo afterwards with Hogan, just spite and unbelievable and venom, and just he's already a total fucking piece of shit. Yep. And like, what a what a promo '96 Hogan was. Mm-hmm. What a piece of garbage, man. Like, and like he would like, he was basically like, to me, he was playing like that sort of vindictive Terry that he would play backstage in politics on That's, the screen. Yeah. It felt like yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's two things at play there with that. Also, it's. The thing I think some people lose in history is how much that saved his career because he was done, bro. Like, mm-hmm. there was nothing left in the whole Gamania shit at that point. Mm-hmm. And the yep. thing that makes it work especially well 
is a lot of the WCW audience had already resented him for like the last year and had got really tired of his shit. So when he turns, these fans are allowed to finally like boo him, you know, and, and resent him. And at, it's, one point, it's at one point, a fan jumps in the ring and Holland Nash had to beat the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like oh, the trash that showers in the ring here. Listen. <clears throat> If you watch Nitro from like the middle of ninety six to what the middle of ninety eight, maybe mm -hmm. how much how much trash gets fucking heaved? <laughs> it's so weird room? though, because like that is like a distinctly WCW thing but too. It's right? funny because like, you'll watch you'll watch like the whole end of your crew and Bischoff's like doing his thing where he like bow, yeah. and all of a sudden the fucking cup of soda hits him in the ear. It's crazy, <laughs> man. It really is. Um, Good question here. Does the NWO work or if it wasn't Hogan as the third man? I think it works, just not in that way, right? Yeah, not to that yeah. level. I think Sting turning would have been crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would have um, been nuts. And it was so well executed. I think it works. But the Hogan thing was, I mean, again, biggest angle in the history of the industry, right? So it's like, yeah, I think it works, but to a much lesser degree because that's a one-of-one -one scenario. I mean, the, the you know, the, the quote earlier that you gave Mama Oracle, where it was like, you know, Hogan turned bad, like, no way. That's yeah. only Hogan's getting that kind of shock yeah. and all. It just is the way yep. it is. Sting would be cool, but it wouldn't be that. Um, yeah. Let's stick with the NWO instead, here for one Instead, more. he would turn heel on Hogan in 99. <laughs> we'll, we'll cross that bridge in many, many years, and I don't want to, but we will. Um, let's stick with the NWO for now. Best angle of the month uh, goes to their parking lot attack on oh. July 29th at the end of the month, which is like one of the greatest just pieces of business in wrestling television history. A great example of an angle breaking a show. Mm -hmm. And everyone picking up the pieces. Um, talk us through this. This is masterful. And just kind of that whole first month of the NWA and full force. Yeah. Right? So like, um, you know, you know, just to kind of break it down, like, so the Summer Olympics happened in the States, um, mm -hmm. in Atlanta in 96. And of course, Atlanta was the base of WCW. Um, and a lot of the production crew had to be there to work on the Olympics. So they had a sort of skeleton crew that they threw together and put over and Disney, um, you know, with their deal with Disney and they put them over and had on the Disney lot in the summer in the heat of the summer, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I mean like long days and shit on the East coast. So you're out there and nitro, you know, it doesn't get dark till, you know, 20 minutes, you know, right. before the show ends. Um, so like it, it's, it's a, uh, it's a really great visual. Um, of course, a lot of the fans are just sort of, you know, tourists or, 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 you know, visitors, but it's still like this really unique sort of feel and it it's adds really to the, cool. sort of, yeah. the sort of yeah. bedlam that that's created by the NWO, um, you know, because they're outdoors and there's no, like, there's no building mm -hmm. to protect them as, you know, as it's the limo weird... pulls up and there's that one where, where Arn looks into the limo. Remember that? Yeah. It's like yeah, a perfect nature. storm in the weirdest way, bro. Like it works so yeah. well. It shouldn't work, yeah. honestly, but it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, yeah, these these Disney shows are just incredible. Just this this momentum that they're able to kind of carry all the way through because they because they do the Disney tapings and then after that they go to Sturgis and they're out in the middle of of the fucking South Dakota, Bischoff, which is which is a beautiful landscape. I'll be honest with you. Yes, but it's like a train wreck of a. Sh it's actually actually I don't hate ninety six. Um, the other ones are much worse, in my opinion. Much, much worse. Yeah. Um, but this, this, this show is actually fun, in, in, in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. you know, all, partly for the first of its first of its kind novelty, but also, it's just, it's just a better show than the other ones. Clearly, they're, also, they're so hot, right? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, and it, it's just a hot. It's just you know such a hot promotion. And of course, we'll cover Sturgis uh, here probably in a couple of weeks. Yeah, but um, like. I don't know, man. There was just something about this. It just, it feels, well, then it feels like right. you're watching something special, even now. You know, yeah. I can't imagine what it was like when you're watching it live. Um, because a lot of the cruise weights are coming in, Ray, Psychosis. Of course, mm -hmm. Ray and Malenko have a fucking incredible cruiserweight title match uh, in the Nitro afterwards. Yes. Where, uh, where, where, where Ray wins the belt, and it's just spectacular. Um, and uh, like they do a really good job of like sort of 
you don't know when the NWO is going to show up. It's usually towards the end of the show, right? Because you know you, mm-hmm. you want to do it while Raw's on. But like they, the way that that that, that feeling, you know, again, that it just gets worse and worse and worse. Of like some shit's about to go down, and it doesn't feel yeah. like it's going to be good for WCW. And um, there's that great scene where where Hogan is. It's always it's on these video clips all the time where he first comes out the black bandana and the. And his and his, you know, he's got he's got the he's got the spray painted beard or whatever, and he comes in and he's and they're beating <laughs> up on they're beating up on Luger, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're beating up on Luger, Luger and Big Bubba. And he comes out and they and the, and the zooms in on him as he comes in. He's laughing and doing the thing. like that's like a great sort of visual of him coming out in the. In There's Disney. so many, bro. The production is like um, is incredible at times. You know? And and of course they they. they Getting up. 15 minutes there, folks. We're, we're piecing it together. Bear with us. The Oracle of Wrestling will be back shortly. We apologize for any inconvenience. He's uh, back. I, the Oracle I, of Wrestling. I, I have, have I returned? You have returned, yes. Carry on, mate. Yeah. Okay, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't terrible. That was not as bad as I was. No, keep going, bro. You're good. Um, but, uh, it's fun. Sting cuts this amazing promo on the Nitro After. That's probably the best promo of his entire career. Where he just yeah. rips into Hogan. It's so good. And he just and it sets up everything for the next 18 months. Mm-hmm. And it's just a beautiful precursor to all the stuff that goes down in the fall with him being feeling betrayed and you know, you know, turning into crow sting or whatever. But like what a promo by him. And like Sting was people are always critical of Sting's promos, and I understand why. I always liked his energy in them, but this is just he gets down and just Hogan brought something mm. out of that dude as a promo, yeah. man. There was there was even the one yeah. he cut before um before he works Hogan in their like baby face match at the end of ninety five. Um, he has that promo well, where he's you Oh, Oracle's gone. Um there's that promo at the end of 95, folks, where Sting really taps into a certain certain energy opposite Hogan. You back, Chief? I don't know if Oracle's back or not. I think so. Am I back? Okay, good. Seems like it. Um, I was just like, saying, Sting now always I'm more concerned into... again. I'm concerned again. Let it play out, bro. Um, yeah. Sting could always tap into a certain energy for Hogan. But, yeah, that was the best promo of the month for after WCW, the Sting mm-hmm. promo. Um Let's quickly jump back to the cruise weights. You brought them up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray and Syke have their match at, at Bash of the Beach, right? Which was the best match of the month. Um, a famous match. Talk us through through that one. I know you mentioned the Dean match just a moment ago. So go for that one, mate. This was the first match that really, like Ray and Dean showed you that they could, like cruiserweights can work and like have a really good match. But Ray and Syke was like, let's do a fucking crazy, you know, spot fest mm-hmm. and do ludicrous spots to pop the crowd. And really kind of sets up the sort of traditional WCW cruiserweight match that you might think of where, you know, you know, Super Kylo is diving into the crowd and, and stuff like that. Like the spots they do in this and they actually really map it out pretty well and 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 pace it pretty well. I, I go back and forth on this match sometimes, but I really like it. I really liked it on my last watch. And uh, really, it's just just an amazing match to watch. And it and it. I think I liked it more because I've been watching all this Context 96 out. stuff from yep. all these three promotions. And yeah, ECW does this crazy stuff, but I mean, it's just, it's like a slot fest there, you know? Mm-hmm. You see it in the setting of WCW and you compare it to that with WWF, you know, the big two. It's like, holy yep. crap, these guys are doing this shit and they're just, they're so crisp and much more smooth and just, it's, it's breathtaking to watch really, uh, you know, when, when you put it into context. Just a, just a terrific match altogether, I think. Absolutely, and it's you know it's not a new uh, take on our part, Oracle, but it is worth noting that kind of combination, right, of that main event angle hitting that way, and then this division finding its feet, all happening at once. It's mm-hmm. absolutely a remarkable mix. Um, the horsemen are still rolling in some yeah. in some form or fashion. They're about to be very relevant in the NWO thing, obviously. Uh, where are we at with the horsemen? The new horsemen. Where are we at with that whole? Dynamic so they're horrible? kind of just treading water until the NWA angle yeah. really picks up, and and you know this this kind of allows me to kind of thread it back into that, yeah. you know, uh, big angle that they're doing. Um, 
you know, the uh, the Dungeon of Doom angle was going on, and we'll briefly, I'll go ahead and briefly cover the <laughs> Sullivan Benoit stuff, which obviously gets more personal. It gets much worse at the end of the year. Good luck, Chief. Um, but um, uh, uh, lots of lots of lots of in person in home interviews that are very uncomfortable. Um, but um, so of course the horsemen are, are having this big feud with the dungeon, right? And um, and they're still feuding with Sting and Luger and Seven and all those other guys. And uh, they had this big match on the 29th of July, mm-hmm. six man. And the week before, Flair was missing. And remember, like, if they did the thing where Flair's not here, is he, is he in the NWO? And they do the thing where Arn looks in the limo because he sees. And, you know, they, they don't reference that, him searching in the limo, until December. And Kevin Ash brings up, like, you remember when you were looking at that limo, Arn Anderson? You know, they're, they're on the, you know, they're, when they, one of the hundreds of times they crashed the booth. And Nash says, remember Arn Anderson, remember that time he. He tried to look in the limo, man. Me and Scotty were in there, and we were hoping, man. He Arn's lucky he didn't get that door. He Arn's lucky he didn't get in that limo, man. We were ready to. He said something funny, yeah. You know? <laughs> I can't remember exactly what he said, but uh, but um, you know, he was drunk as hell and mm-hmm. saying whatever on the damn mic. But um, <clears throat> oh, and 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 for what it's worth, Nash and Hall weren't pissed drunk on all these shows just yet. So, no, no. No, no. That would that have been unfortunate. Really, you know, yeah. the spring breaks yeah. and whatnot. Uh, but but uh, there's there's something those shows, aren't they? Wow. Uh, <clears throat> but um, so they have this big six man tag. I think it's like so the Horseman Flair's there this time, right? Um, mm-hmm. Flair Mongo Benoit versus uh. What is it? Oh. Sting, Luger, and Savage, I think is right. I can't remember it's all three of the top eight. I think it might be. Yeah, yeah. I think, it, and they're having a killer match, man. Mm-hmm. We're having this killer match, um, doing like just all kinds of just badass shit and, and like really heated. Crowd's really into it. Just like it's, it's like a fight. Like it's really good, strong, like Southern style tag where, mm-hmm. you know, just a lot of. Big time, you know, heated exchanges and whatnot. Jimmy Hart comes running out of the ring. Jimmy Hart's the man. So man. good, man. Oh, I'm freaking out. Oh, so NW, the outsiders are in the back. The <laughs> so, the, so the so the cameras chase Jimmy and they're like, it's like it's like found footage, you know, it's like fucking mm-hmm. overfield over here. The guy's like chasing Jimmy Hart into the back into the trailers, the locker rooms, you know, back to the Disney lot and trailers, and and they're the outsiders. You hear the pipe drop, you know, and Nash and Hall are laughing. They're beat up, and Marcus Bagwell's all beat up, and uh, Arn Anderson's been hit with a pipe, and he's in, you know, oh, oh, on, bro. Up. And uh, <laughs> Riggs goes, Marcus, <laughs> one of the funniest. Funniest bits of the whole thing. Scotty Riggs shows up. Marcus, can we can we just just park it on for a minute and talk about how it is absolutely presented as though Arm may be dead? <laughs> like yeah. it is, it appears that Arm may be of murder, may have been murdered by the. Yeah, it looks like he's the way he's holding his arm. Looks like he's been stabbed by the pipe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's so like there's so there's such a sense of tragedy to the way well, the that Arm is just like, he's got that one like sort of like. Half ass street lamp right outside the trailers. Yeah. You can't really see well. It's like it's a movie dark. Thing. And uh, or or at least it's or at least it's getting dark, like like dusk is sort mm-hmm. of approaching. And um <laughs> of course Riggs gets they just throw they they just throw like a bag of like tools at, at Scotty Riggs' head and knocks him out. And um and uh of course, Ray comes out of the trailer. Ray, Ray's like looking through the window, comes out of the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and just all of a sudden springboards off the pole of the, of the trailer ramp. And of course, very famous spot. Mm-hmm. It's lawn darted into the trailer. And right as that happens, all the baby faces and everybody's running. And they get into the car or whatever. Fucking Randy Savage. Savage is crazy. <laughs> Lunatic. <laughs> Leaps. On the hood Same. of his car, <laughs> and gets slung off. I mean, totally psychotic, as he's literally like. And this is like, 
there's no stunt man. This but this is like who's ever whoever's driving that car. Lucky they didn't kill Savage. Like I'm not kidding. Incredible man. deal, man. Incredible. Like, especially when they're peeling it out around the lot, you know. Mm-hmm. Like what the hell? Um, and of course that that gets him out of the scene because someone someone pointed out. I think it was Lawson PW pointed this out. Like he didn't really need to be part of that. Like the way Savage's character was at the time. Like right. the ser- Like I mean, he was obviously you know there were things. Later on, where he did really well with the suit, like with the Liz stuff, when Hogan would use Liz, whatever. But mm-hmm. like, it wasn't really, f- it didn't really fit him to be you in that agree. sort of setting. So it was, I think they did a really good job of like getting him out of the way. And mm-hmm. I, and I thought that was a great point that Lost pointed out. But um, everybody comes in and floods it, and the whole show stops. Arn's supposed to be in a match. Ray's supposed yep. to be in a match. Obviously, they can't be in the match. Ray's going. There were four guys. There were four guys, and they're like the whole, time, the whole thing is there are four. There are four of them. Who's the fourth guy? <laughs> and like Ray's all you know, like hurt and, and confused and discombobulated, and can't and can't you know tell him who the fourth guy was and wasn't sure. And um, Waltman comes in in September. Uh, he comes in right the night after Fall Brawl. Um, so it's 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 a little bit before Waltman shows up, but. Um, just an incredible and like the whole show is like it's insane and like go to the break they come back they're all like aren't like woman is like weeping yeah like Arn is like Arn's like of course like 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 ben wall starts crying and then mm-hmm. in a great little moment the dungeon of doom shows up and the faces of fear like start laughing and la- laughing at Arn, and ben wall and Arn getting a huge like remember like mm-hmm. ben wall and Arn or ben wall and uh ming getting a fight Man, yeah they have to break it up and like just an incredible piece of business and the cherry on top. That's just when they put them on the ambulance, Bagwell and Arn get put in ambulance together and Sting and Flair. Yes. More enemies. They join the ambulance together. Yeah. As it rides off. And that, I mean, just that taps into the core ingredient in the story, which on now is of his promo next month, right? Where Mm -hmm. the idea that we may fight here, but this is our world and we ain't going to let it go away, which aged incredibly when you look when you actually hear what he says now you kind of go fuck like there was a lot to that promo there's a lot of substance yeah. to it but you know the idea that if you were a wcw fan you cheered for sting or flair but you loved them both because they were wcw mm-hmm. this was different this was not a rivalry this was you know fighting for their lives it's just yeah and and, and the way that i think it's it's important to note this angle was like 45 minutes long yeah it was bold man very like bold it, it you know this this thing went on and on, mm-hmm. and they had to like try to continue on with it. Like they could, like Heenan leaves the booth because he's like he can't take That's it. That's great. I love that. Like, yeah. it, and it's not like tip. Like Heenan always flees, which always was a nice touch for the most part. But like he's dead serious here. It's like I because this is early on. He's like I can't do this. He's like I, I yeah. Gotta. And he's more grounded in that segment, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's mm-hmm. more restrained. It's it's fabulous. Right. Yeah, it's very which daring. Sense, it's Heenan, yeah. it would be he would, it makes more sense for him to be more histrionic when they're actually. You know, engaging mm-hmm. the booth and, and storming it. You know, yes. Um, sure. Let me tell you some something, boy. That Heenan could book that book it, man. You watch him leave the booth when they would storm the booth. <laughs> the last thing he wants is fucking Hall or Nash slapping him in the back of the head. Yeah, he ain't got time for that shit. No, he's him. he's out of there, man. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like, but um, God, what an angle, man. Like that's fabulous. That's the best, like it's the best wrestling angle in TV in T- wrestling TV history. I, I think uh, so. You know, at least major wrestling. There's some angles in Memphis that are, and uh, for what it's worth, um, rest in peace, Jerry Jarrett. Who, without him, a lot of what you would see on wrestling today, exactly. Particularly yeah. an angle like this, by the way, mm-hmm. the angle we're talking about. That angle doesn't happen without Jerry Jarrett. In my no. opinion. It's almost all traced back to him. He was the way. one who created the crash TV element. Yep. Which was, he was the one who created, not necessarily, but like he was the one who revolutionized implementing human element and betrayal and stuff like that in wrestling. Yeah. Particularly in the South. And because other wrestling companies were doing that in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And like, I know this is kind of like a 
it's kind of, you know kind of turning into the uh, you know tribute to him but i like that's cool. just just thinking about it this angle doesn't happen i, I don't think without without yeah, Jordan's influence yeah. and memphis's influence um yeah. in, in the late 70s and 80s um because that just I, I think people don't quite understand how critical um do you want to know where jim Cornette started and i know Cornette's mm-hmm. way had been memphis do you want to know where paul Heyman had a lot of his starts from mm-hmm. yeah it's interesting you know, man you know, like it could almost all be traced back to to mm-hmm. Memphis and Jerry Jarrett. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it's, it's, um, I think this angle is actually a great example of what you're talking about. Yep. Really. Yep. You know. Yep. Uh, he he created the element um, of of that, and uh, <clears throat> like particularly Cornette and Heyman, you know, come to mind yep. as sort of kind of disciples of him. Particularly Cornette, but you know mm-hmm. Heyman and 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 uh, I think. Paulie's booking, he seems to be doing okay from what I can see right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Every time. Clips. Yes, I think Oracle agrees with my assessment. Pretty uh, confident on that, folks. Am I back? You're back. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, yes, if, you, if, if you have the time, go go watch YouTube clips of like, the 70 betrayals between Bill Dundee and, 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 and Jerry Lawler. And like every single one of them makes sense, even though they've turned on each other 7,500 times. Mm-hmm. Like, and I know Tremendous. it's silly. Cause like, you know, it becomes somewhat becomes a deep beating, but, but like a beating dead horse. But Memphis was all about the human relationships between everybody and like friendships mm-hmm. and betrayal and all that stuff. And like when you get into like and work shoots and shit like that, and then you look at this NWO angle, you know, come, you know, coming back, to what we're talking about, yeah. this was, you know, centered around all that kind of, kind of wrestling booking. So uh, rest in peace to Jerry Jarrett for sure. Absolutely. A um, couple last things on WCW before we move to ECW. We have the um, big Baba is, <laughs> this is a, very, a big switch out here in tone, but at the pay per view, Baba shares quite the match with, uh, with John Center and they, um, they have a very different kind of feuds and stuff we're discussing here. Uh, Oracle. Again. If you're st- Hold up. Oracle's going to be back with us, I'm sure, shortly. Um, yes, John Center and Big Barber have a, a very different tone to their feud here, folks, which Oracle's going to explain to us just about now, I think. Oracle? Yeah, uh, hopefully I can explain it. Uh, hope, hopefully I can explain the feud. Uh, I don't know why my is doing what it's doing. Um. But um, this feud sucks. Um, Indeed. Indeed, it does. John Tenta like shaves his head, like <laughs> like halfway, like he's fucking Skrillex or something. It's very um, unfortunate. It's very, it's, very, it's very bad. Matches are not good. Um, Jimmy Hart has one crazy moment where he, that pole in that match. Yeah, <laughs> it's like thirty feet high. It's so ridiculous. It's not that high, but you know, <laughs> it is insane. It looks insane. Yeah, it looks ridiculous. Like, uh, yes, I believe the "I'm not a shark" promo takes place around this time. If I'm not mistaken. It got real rough there for John. Bless him, man. I'm oh, not man. a shark. And then he, and then he had to be like, basically a South Park character and mm-hmm. WWE for his for his last this run. Is, bless this him. is the craziest part about this. Oh, Tenet was only 33 during this feud. He feels. Bless him, man. He feels like he's completely finished, right? Like, he's, there's nothing left. And he, and he was. God bless the he man. Was, yeah, yeah, he, he was. He was. Just uh, a lot of that back in the day is just, I think, the, the schedule they had in that golden era, it, it did a lot of damage in every which way. Um, mm. DDP, he's uh, defending the uh, the Battle Bowl ring. What was their phrasing for it here? They had, like, a, didn't they have a different name for it? Like, a, they had, like, the Lord of the, Lord yeah, of the Ring. Yeah, Lord of the Ring. Yeah, whatever the hell it was. Yeah, how's DDP coming along, Oracle? He's 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 getting over. You know, the the diamond cutter really starts to get over in the in the fall, I think. Mm-hmm. But he's he's coming along and he's getting these mid card feuds with Bagwell and and uh, um I can't remember who, who he works on this show. Maybe it is Bagwell, but he he works he 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 works. Um, eventually he gets in a few with the Guerreros that last a while. Um, yes. but um. Yeah, he's he's kind of you know moving his way up the mid card, and and uh, of course eventually he gets recruited by the outsiders, and there's a lot to that, and makes him a star, and so on and so forth. But 
you know, so, so right now he's he's sort of you can tell he's getting better in the ring. He was already getting better in the ring in '95. He worked Duggan on this show, it appears. Okay, Duggan. Yeah, 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 that's right. I remember that. I remember that now because Duggan steals like his there's a promo like on like the July first Nitro or whatever it was, where like I've got your all. You know, Duggan's ridiculous <laughs> and DDP's all mad and pitches a fit about it. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can tell Paige is getting better as a worker. He was getting better as a worker against Johnny B. Bad in the fall of '95, which we covered. Mm-hmm. But he's really. He can get a. He can get a. Not even. I wouldn't even say good or even decent, but he can get a watchable TV match with just about anybody, just by setting up the diamond cutter and and sort of putting in his spots that he does and, and mapping out his yeah. matches the way that he does. Um, yeah, he's 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 getting a lot better. He's, he he starts to get more and more over as the year goes on. But uh, yeah, he's 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 getting there. Uh, it's funny. My my brother Dylan was here a couple weeks ago during Rumble Week. Where I was watching a lot of this stuff, and I was like, "Man, DDP sucks as a promo. You know, he's not that great." And he was like, huh, "Back then, buddy, he was like everybody thought DDP was a good promo. He was like that was the he, <laughs> he was like yeah. people talked about him as some great promo back then." I thought, "What the hell?" Mm-hmm. Um, the, some of his promos aren't that bad, but he just it's very he's he his lines, man. Yeah. I wish he was very derivative too, right? Like he was clearly yeah. trying to like piece different wrestlers together for his own style. Yeah. Um, he gets there in the end though, as an overall act, certainly. So, um, God bless him. Okay, I think it's fair to say it was a big month for WCW. I think we, you know, that's that much kind of oh, goes yeah. back. Just a, just a, a transformative. Month. Yes, transformative. Worth Truth, like visiting over and over again. To be honest, yeah. probably. Not, I think probably. I think. WCW's whole history. If you said what's one month I should watch of that history, this is probably the month, right? Like mm-hmm. this almost has to be. Um, special, special time. Meanwhile, in Extreme Championship Wrestling, uh, they was not without a win this month. Or they took the fourth of the month's five mm-hmm. TVs. Um, their pay per view event, their big event is Heat Wave '96. This is most famous for a match that I've actually seen before, which is not always the case for ECW, which is the like extended. TV title deal. Where how long they go? They go a long time here, right? Like forty fucking minutes, man. It's insane. Um, they certainly put some start some time in, and the finish (laughs) is the big turn, right? Francine turns on the pit balls and helps Shane Douglas win the TV title. This was your best match of the month. Did you like it on this particular rewatch? Because from what I recall, it's somewhat, um, you know, it's polarizing in some ways. I liked it in the context and on rewatch. Okay, it's overrated. Some people think it's yeah. terrible, and I understand why. It's I've so seen that, long. yes. <laughs> and like Jericho wasn't polished enough in the ring. <laughs> it's funny to think of Paul, Jericho being polished because that's certainly not that now, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and for what it's worth, folks, I liked the Ishii match a couple months ago. So let's, you know. Yeah. But um, like uh, he, he, um, you know, it's just a lot of just unpolished work here. Scorpio looks good. Like, the big point is like the finishing run and like Francine's turn, which is executed really well. And the, the kind of wave of momentum and the crowd reactions with like the Francine yeah. turn, Douglas winning, Francine already eating. Someone mentioned this at PWO board. Someone Francine already eats, and, and they have a good point. She already gets super bombed through a table. She just <laughs> turned 90 seconds early and they already do it. It's like you can build to that. No, fuck it, man. We gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <It's> incredible. <laughs> Paulie, bro, Paulie with a headset on and his hat. Mm-hmm. No, fuck it. We're yeah. doing it. We gotta, we gotta send them home from this segment happy. No, it yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. There's another four matches on the show. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, I was intrigued by your take on this match because I remember when I watched it, reading the reviews and stuff, and people being like very. Strong opinions across the board. So it popped me that you had this is the best match of the month. That that popped me. Yeah. Um, show is headlined by uh, there's a six man deal right with Sandman and Raven on either side. Right was the uh, headline for Heatwave. What's yeah. the latest with their program? I know this is kind of a, a famous dynamic here. Where are we at in in July '96? Well, um, <laughs> uh, Raven Raven has has manipulated mm-hmm. Peaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, also known as Laurie Fullington, Sandman's ex-wife, 
into being his disciple and has basically kidnapped Sandman's child, Tyler Fullington, in the Raven's Nest. <laughs> and Tyler, this small child, is wandering around ringside with... <clears throat> Poor kid has no clue how to emote and all this shit, and he's dressed in Raven's clothes and like, <laughs> so he got a bad Halloween costume. God bless yeah. the kid. Um, <laughs> and, and like, Sandman has to carry the whole angle, you know, because he's he's got to be the one to emote. He, he does a fairly decent job. It's a pretty, pretty tough gig, pretty right? Pretty intense pretty tough angle, man. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty challenging. I, and, 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 There's no point where I necessarily think the kids being like put in too difficult positions, but it's just like there's there's there is one point where Raven. I think I mentioned it in June of '96 where Raven cuts a promo about impregnating Lori Fullington or something, and there's little Tyler standing right there, and I'm like, "Come on, guy, come on, yeah. Paul." Honestly. We probably should have, you know, when I did the Paul Lee praise bit a minute ago, and we did like a victory lap. I should have, I should have saved that. I feel considering we were following it with the ECW segment. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a complicated genius, folks. It is what it is, right? It's, you know. Well, um, I mean, we did we did watch we did watch five months of of uh, of 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 of, of uh, Bobby Lashley cuckolding that was uh, so nice. Miro and and. Then that live deal forming into a lesbian love triangle. When he did that live angle, I remember it being like everyone that has seen Paul Lee before is like, "Oh my god, he's still he's still doing this thing, man! Like this is insane. Where did this? Where did it come from?" Liv had those vignettes where she's using like the bath. Remember that deal? Yeah, fucking Paul Lee. And then he, they did a documentary about Liv, and Paul Lee was like, "She she represents the masses, you know. She doesn't know where she's going. She doesn't know who she is. It's like good lord, man. God, what a." Uh, what a character. We'll leave it at that. Um, Louis Ficoli is in the territory. He works Sabu on Heatwave. Talk us through his early days here in Extreme Championship Wrestling. They really give Louis a, you know, Louis a push, man. They really, yeah, really man. do. Um, you know, He has a nine-month run or so, maybe even a year run so in, w, in ECW, where he's really pushed in a lot of ways as a number Featured, one yeah. under, undercard babyface. Mm-hmm. Like he, you know. Of course, he he has the famous Death Valley Driver, which is his name is you know his sort of his sort of kind of tumbleweed uh, Death yeah. Valley Driver that he does, which everybody of course calls the uh, Spicoli Driver in his in his memory. Um, hits that beautifully all the time, but he's he's got talent in the ring. Um, I've I've never I've never been a huge Spicoli fan, but he's 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 definitely got some talent. It's just it's interesting that that Heyman saw so much in him because he he was very he pushed very heavily for 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 quite a bit during mm-hmm. during a really big run in ECW, like in, in yeah. terms of the history of the company. He's always interested in that regard, Heyman. Mm-hmm. Right? Like you'll sometimes he'll go with guys, and it's in, it's always intriguing to see what to, to kind of ponder what he sees there. You know, and so yeah. I think. I've seen quite a bit of this this stuff because he just kind of always intrigued me, um, and he really is featured. For He's a, a good worker, man. I mean, yeah, he is. It's yeah, Macaulay, Rad Rafford, whatever you want to call him. I mean, on Rad Rafford on Superstars was having some good matches, yeah. man. Good worker, absolutely. Um, I think Paulie always likes to have that particular babyface role filled mm-hmm. too with with Hansy deems capable. So, um, yeah, it's a shame. Um, the show is open by uh, the gangsters work the Simone Gangster Party on Heatwave, right? Now they're they're I looked at these notes, Oracle. This sounds like a hell of a deal. I'm not familiar with this, but they're in a four-team feud with the Eliminators and Bruce Brothers. The best angle comes in here somewhere when I believe the Simone Gangster Party kicks the shit out of the gangsters. I believe was what was what the notes uh, yes. suggested. Talk us through everything that's going on here because this is a okay. lot. There's they a lot just happening. have this amazing four-way tag feud because like the, the big tag feud of the year is the gangsters and the eliminators. Right. But the moment gangster party gets involved and like they do this great angle where like New Jack and, and Mustafa are cutting this crazy promo out in the streets and like Simone Gangster Party just pull up in a car and beat the shit out of them. And I think someone tweeted this recently. I'm convinced that's what because I think the gangster this. party is is um oh god, I believe it's Samu and then Rosie, uh, uh Roman Reigns' big brother. Oh, is it really um, right? I know mm-hmm. I think it's Rosie, yeah. Wow. Yep, may may he rest in peace. Looks or, or priest. <laughs> may may he rest in peace. It looks just like Roman in the face. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, Rosie had the had 
had well Roman kind of had the gap too, but he he got mm-hmm. when he came back. But um, certainly did yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they, in fact, that was jarring. Remember when Roman first came back and like mm-hmm. the way his teeth had been whitened, it was almost yeah. jarring. I remember that vividly being a thing. Yeah, because <laughs> he had a great image in the Thunderdome, mm-hmm. where like after he came back and him just looking down, he's like yeah. his early whites, you know. I just forget um, that Rosie was around there. Like I knew I I was pretty sure it was Samu, but I didn't. I, it's just it, you kind of don't think of him from that era in my head. I don't, you know. Yeah, but nonetheless, he, I mean, he was a yeah. He he because I think he was in his late forties when he passed. You know, you know, a few years back now. Um. I think he was like forty-seven, so he was. I mean, you know, all these, all these guys in in the in the bloodline, <laughs> um, they uh, they you know they they usually start pretty young. So mm. um, he was, you know, probably in his, you know, probably your age. Yeah, you know, around this time maybe something like that. He was mm-hmm. he was awfully young. So you know, his uh, Samu was uh, was. Uh, he was oh, more of a bit from that point because he had the, or whatever, but yeah, because he had the previous run, right? So yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, yeah. Good shit. Good shit. There's, I'm there's going this. Oh, that was that was a particularly funny one because Oracle warned us before how much I appreciate. Come back. Fizzy's coming back. Here we go. Come back. I gotta hook up. Bro, that was great because before you cut out, all up. we heard was all we heard was I'm going again. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's transition to. Uh, everyone's favorite color commentator these days, Taz. He's heating up here in '96. He takes best promo of his effort. Heat wave. How's Taz doing, Oracle? How's he getting on here in '96? Taz is awesome, man. Like he takes a bit of a dip in the fall, but when the Sabu stuff really ramps up at the in like November, October, November, boy, it gets mm-hmm. it gets good. He just comes out and says "fuck you" to the fans in the front row. It rules. Um, it's, it's just it's just funny to like. Knowing like the personality we hear on Taz on commentary every week in AEW, so weird, yeah. and like him, so he's like just like this jokester from Brooklyn, you know. Yeah. He's you know he's like this kind of like tough guy jokes Brooklyn on comment, and then it's just like, oh my goodness, cliffhanger, folks, cliffhanger. I like, we're in a particular rhythm now where Oracle drops out twice and then returns for a long stretch. I think, and hopefully, we should be good now for about 15 minutes or so. Oracle? Yeah, I hope keep so. Going. I hope so. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sorry, keep folks. I, th- I honestly think it's the it's a combination of the room that I'm in, but mostly um, it's time to to pay the buck for the for the new laptop, I think. Yeah, shit happens sometimes, too, bro. Don't worry about it. Was, where are we at with Taz to kind of conclude that yeah, business? So he's just, he, he's just, it's just funny to, like, compare like the commentator we hear now to like yeah. fuck you you piece of shit <laughs> yeah. you know so, it's, just, it's just funny like um good shit. yeah of course he just comes out with team taz now all the groups and towels and shit mm-hmm. you know um fonzie's blowing away on that whistle um so cool. annoying sometimes yeah i never could uh I could never quite get to grips with enjoying that that shtick. I don't know if I ever got there personally, in my yeah. in my limited experience. But um, nonetheless, what's the latest with the latest with the Dudleys? I know there's a lot of moving pieces with the Dudleys here at this point. Where are we at? <clears> this point? So Bubba and Devon are in the midst of this crazy feud that involves like <clears throat> Devon ends up getting Axel Rotten as a partner. Man, that might be a little bit later on, but Big Dick Dudley starts to get into the ring and joins up with Bubba, and it's like kind of like. It's mainly Bubba versus Devon, and mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's a it's a big it's a big feud that uh, eventually Joel Gertner inserts himself, and I'll go ahead and address it. So I think it's in the notes. Yes. He turns heel. He returns. He turn, turns as a heel ring announcer here. Uh, and uh, some some interesting notes about Gertner. If, I, I don't trust to investigate myself, Joe. So if you can help me out here and look it up, he okay. went to a Ivy League school. And dropped out because he was a wrestling mark and wanted to be in wrestling. Um, very intelligent guy. He really was. Uh, very, very much, very much a wordsmith. Um, which was, uh, you know, this appears to be true, Oracle. Yeah. Um, uh, Cornell. It appears um, so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very, yes. very, very smart guy, but. Um, very much uh, a 1990s version of a white male. Um, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I will say Alex's impression of him is some of Alex's finest work, which whenever I hear his name now, I just think of Alex doing that fucking video he did. At the time. <laughs> Uh, there, there's some there's some things that like he's so annoying but it's i do i do commend him for like being a very good wordsmith yeah like because like he'll like do stuff where like he'll he'll like take like un for example and he'll like like underappreciated underutilized and he'll like mm-hmm. say that and like He'll spend yeah. three minute segment talking about like, using different. He makes the most of his time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be. But it, it, it's he becomes more and more sleazy as time goes on. Uh, as he calls the quintessential stud muffin, as he calls himself. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> his his gut grows and his and his uh, <laughs> and and as <laughs> yeah, but character. Yeah, as, character. As, yeah. Everyone seek uh, Alex's impression. It's good shit. <laughs> yes. Um, good month for ECW. You think Oracle? Yeah, it was. It was. It was good. It was good. I think they start to falter here a little bit here pretty soon. But they they, mm-hmm. they pick things back up as they really start to uh, as the barely legal rumors start to start to unfold and at the end of the year around November to remember and and things really start to get 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 hot again. I think. Good stuff. Okay, let's move now to the. The company that was about a win and for the month, um, the World Wrestling Federation, Bob O'Neill's sports team. Uh, their event, <laughs> their event for the month is in your house in a national incident. This is not a like famous show. This month very much was like a stopgap for them in that regard, right? Summer Slam's coming up next month, and you know, mm-hmm. that's kind of the way it works out. Not much of a show. The the main event of the show does take the best match of the month for the WWF, though. It's Camp Cornet. Yeah, it's a really good time. Camp Cornet opposite. Ahmed Johnson, Shawn Michaels, and Sid. Before you go, Rico, I don't know if you've heard, but our friend Bob once said that Ahmed Johnson was Kurt Angle before Kurt Angle. I don't wow. Know <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've heard that before, but that felt relevant here. Um, this Before you even get to the match, You're Sid is going back. Down. <laughs> You're going down. There he is. Yeah. For a few, he the free will. eyes, brother. Um, Sid is back. Let's talk Sid being back, and then let's talk about that main event, which we're both very fond of. Go ahead, Oracle. Yeah, um, so Warrior uh, is, is is out again. God you know, bless. It's he's, over, bro. Uh, he's 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 uh, taking his ball and went home again. Mm-hmm. Um, Shame he's about to pick it up in a couple of years and go to World Championship Wrestling, yeah. but for now you're free, Oracle. For now you're free. <laughs> yeah, um, terrible run that he had. It's awful. Yep. Um, he had like this this marketing deal that was apparently in his contract were like the warrior like comic book whatever i think it was and like it was yeah. it, there wasn't there wasn't vince wasn't really going through the deal or whatever and war was mad so we just no showed stuff and then they did this great interview where gorilla monsoon opens raw and he's like an appearance bond you know gorilla talks mm-hmm. he wants to post an appearance bond if he doesn't pay the appearance bond and you know whatever uh and so and then he gets his ass run. kicked by Owen Hart and Kent Cornette beats his ass and he's gone off WWF TV for 18 years. Yeah. Um, Indeed. But, but uh, no, Rob, I would have gone to the grave with that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we have a grinner who is just, who just conceded and said they once they, they bought a copy of that very comic. But I mean, that's a piece of history in fairness. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that <laughs> it's I'm nothing in my history. <laughs> But um, uh, you know Owen Hart's friend Warrior, which I always thought like that's another thing. I the PWO reads uh, that I did to refresh my memory on my mind. So someone noted that he and uh, he and Owen were friends, which is just Insane. hilarious. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So 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 Warrior is out of the main event, and uh, Ahmed and Sean of Sean and Ahmed got to look for a new partner and. They actually do a really fun bit throughout the show where they're like building it, building up. They like do the pre-tape. And and Cornette's reaction when it's Sid is incredible. And Sid. Oh God, he rules. How fucking awesome is Sid? Like this guy rules, man. He's so he comes awesome. up here 
with this t- with like look like looking like a uh, looking like a like a like a like a middle aged mom with a perm, you know. <laughs> Be so big, so it makes him better. Wedding profusely. Get this. He has these great facial features, you know. That he's just, and he's just like, I'm the master. You know, he puts the, I'm the master. Yeah, man. And it's <laughs> beautiful. And it's, it's, what a what a fucking promo too. I mean, like, like it's funny. Like, if you like, as I've watched obviously a ton of set as I've gone plowing my way through '96. His promos rule, even when he fumbles. Yeah. Like, oh, he's got energy. Dylan was, 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 was watching this promo and he goes, God damn, he rules. It's so great. <laughs> he was like, even when he fucks up, he rules. He's genuinely magnetic. Like, he's actually yeah. charismatic, you know? Yeah. And, and like, I think, I, think I, I just finished watching In Your House, It's Time in December, and, and we'll get to it, but I, I have to point this out. He's, he's one of the battles he's beating Brad or whatever. And the crowd's like hugging him. And he goes, I'm the World <laughs> Wrestling <laughs> Federation <laughs> Heavyweight. <laughs> and like, he's like fist pumping fans, pouring his sweat, his perms, of, you know. You know, you, you, could, you, you know, you could flick his perm and like. <laughs> he's just so great. Tremendous, man, and that, and that match yeah. is really fun, bro. It's, it's really fun. Good, and Sid's not even all that great, but like yeah. Ahmed comes in and almost kills Owen with rolling Germans at one point. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Sean and Owen have like these incredible exchanges. They do a rolling cradle at one point in the match, which rules. Yeah. The match kicks ass, man. Great finish too, with with with, yeah. with Vader getting the pin on Sean. Great mm-hmm. post match. Sean does a crazy dive out the floor. Let's um, let's kind of go in that direction for a minute. Sean and Vader, that's the that's underway now. We're headed to SummerSlam, very famous match, mm-hmm. which we'll get into next one with Sean and Vader. What is the kind of early stages of that whole deal? Obviously, as you mentioned, that finish leads into it. And where are we at with that whole thing? This, this was a decent way to heat it up. Uh, yeah. I, I do want to point out this is the famous entrance where Sean comes out and the guardrail collapses. Yes, all the fans come to see him, course, and he's yeah. and the whole and the whole guardrail collapses, which is a great, great kind of mm-hmm. um, off script moment. Um, but um, and also dangerous, so, but um, yeah. memorable nonetheless. Yeah, you know, Vader had already sort of faded into obscurity already, and they were able to kind of build him back up for this title program. And uh, all, all I can say is, doesn't go well. We'll we'll we'll, we'll touch on that. Uh, thanks, and you know, thanks in no part to Sean. Yeah. Um, and uh, Vader's already like sort of vanished already as 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 I've about to as i'm about to close up on 96 and it's like because i actually think he's pretty damn good in 97 i actually think 97 is vader's best year in wwf in terms of in the mm-hmm. ring he's great final four is a really good shamrock match um yeah. he's he's got the good taker match at at, yeah. at uh Canadian Stampede. Stampede. Yeah. And, and even the rumble match against takers i remember being pretty mm-hmm. decent um yeah. but like he just <sighs> it never no, quite feels no. right does it it no, never no, quite it feels right I think Vince um, hated that he was a big guy who bumped too. He hated that. Oh, I drove. Yeah, and so did all the boys too. God damn it! <laughs> Why Leon were... bump Leon? Get... God damn it, Leon! A lot of the guys felt the same way. It's bizarre. They yeah. hated the way you know, and obviously he hits yeah. hard. I get that, but they would all whine about the way you would. I don't know. It's a weird situation. Yeah. Um, because Vader was you know objectively awesome, but nonetheless, uh, in terms of heating Vader up, Jim Cornette is obviously central in this whole thing. He takes best promo here, close the month. Um, Cornet is about to become a lot less important as the kind of years go on. But as of the mid, you know, kind of um, the summer of 96, he's still Jim Cornet, right? I mean, he's still cutting those promos. <laughs> so, so the last sort of Cornet appearances we're going to get here, because this is, he fades away at the end of 96. Yeah. We, we get him some on commentary in the 97 to 99, which is always entertaining at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, but we get we, we get the NWA invasion. Let's just go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I forgot. Were they were they were w, where WF actually gets like a you know, does like a promotional deal with, with NWA. And uh it starts out as Cornets doing those promos. Yeah. It was like this like a state of the industry kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
in like late 97 he's just you know eviscerating everything mm-hmm. um in you know classic cornet fashion um other than that you know he gets shipped off to ohio you know Indeed. uh well kentucky rather uh louisville um he shipped off back home to louisville uh where he tells batista to fuck off and Causes all sorts of other problems. Yeah, causes all sorts <laughs> of other problems. And... Yeah. The, the full corner experience in which he's both, like, insane, gets him multiple issues, but also does, like, great wrestling stuff along the way because, of course, right, that's what right. he does, you know? It's, um, yeah, things are about to change there a bit. For the NWA thing, I think, and we'll get into this when it comes up, but isn't the story on that the Russo was, like, fucking with him? In which case, you kind of have to respect that on some level, right? Like... Oh, you love the NWA shit? Well, here you go. You know, like, I ain't, listen, folks, I don't like Vince Russo. That's kind of, I respect it on some Well, you know, there was a time when Russo and Cornette were like in creative meetings together. Oh, yes. And Cornette was oh, like, yes. this is fucking terrible. Well, that's the one yeah. that Alex and I always love when, when uh, the Patriot story. Yeah. When they were, the, they were beating the Patriot and Cornette was mad about it and they kept moving on to the Sable segment. And you. There's a quote that Alex, every time I do a show of Alex, he tries to work here. There's a quote where he goes, I'm not Ken Shamrock. I'm not Randy the Natural Couture. But I could whip Kevin Dunn. <laughs> and he talks about pulling him by the teeth, and Alex always quotes it, and he knows it pops me. <laughs> At random times, we do Green Grat and Alex would say, I'm no Randy the Natural Couture. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> lunatic. Yeah, quite the deal. Um, oh, I forgot about that. Bombastic Bob and Bodacious Bart. <laughs> Who would have thought that Bart Gunn would have, that was Bart Bart Gunn would have been doomed after that? And Bob Holly Incredible. actually would have had a run afterwards. Um, I want to make this clear. I'm many things, but a a misquoter of Bob is not one of them. Um, this is well established in law of the historical oracle, and I will find the quote if necessary, folks. I'll find it. I'll clip it. It was one of the funniest things I've ever heard. I nearly died laughing when he said it. It was on the podcast, not on the late night green. I was listening to it to be a supportive friend, and Bob said it without any hesitation. Dude, Classic okay, moment. Though, be honest. Imagine 95, 96 Ahmed versus 2007, 2008 TNA Kurt Angle. Brother, I'm all in. I, had, no, I like Ahmed, you know? Like, I'm pro Ahmed Johnson. Oh, yeah. But... He's not why Kurt Angle, bro. What we do <laughs> we ain't even the biggest Kurt Angle fans, but who is comparing those two dudes? <laughs> like <laughs> I even knew what he I'm, meant, I'm, but it was I just the way he said it. It was so funny. Tremendous. Can you hear me? Yes, you good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I might be a little bit delayed here. I can I can feel myself being delayed, but we'll see. You're good. You're good. You sound okay. it's okay. okay. We good. can work around it. Um yeah, I'm just I'm just imagining like the crazy spots that ninety five like like the like that ninety six Ahmed would do with Yeah, well Tina Kurt Angle. Kurt did crazy spots of everyone at that point, right? That's, that's Bless true. him. Bless him. Um the abyss match. Anything on what he does to dive off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> And he like tucks his knees like he's diving into like a pool. <laughs> <laughs> Anything specific on that cornet promo um, to close the month? It's the one on Jose Lafario, right? I think it's just a vicious beat down of Jose Lafario, and it's Jim Cornet ninety six. So you know, use your imagination. Yeah, he's an animal. Um, Austin and Mero, they wrestle on that show. That you know, this is kind of a, a mm-hmm. familiar pairing. We talked about it a lot actually on the last show we did because it was King mm-hmm. of the Ring, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where are we at with their rivalry at this point, Oracle? Uh, another good match. Um, they just they they had good chemistry together. Mero had a really good ninety six. Even even towards the end of the year, he was having good matches with guys. Um, he mm-hmm. just he was good. He and Farouk had that that IC title final was good. You know, I mean, it wasn't great, but it was a solid match. Um, he and Elmsley had a couple. You know, had one or two matches that were you know, you know, you know, watchable. You know, like decent. Like yeah. he he's of course Austin is Austin's right at the cut. Like of course he's done the three sixteen promo, but. We don't really get the Austin surge until Brett wants to win games, yeah. where he where he and Pillman come yes. out. And yeah. Say Brett's supposed to come, and yeah. they 
that whole you know that whole ordeal and and you know off a run into the Builders Survivor Series. But Brett wanting to work with him was so big, man, so mm-hmm. big. Like changed everything. We did. Um, Sable and Marlena. They're in, entering some sort of angle here. Where, so where are we at with that? They were they they were they were toying with the idea of doing a sort of lesbian angle with these two at the mm-hmm. time, but it's the summer of '96, and I think there was a little bit too early for for, for Vince to want to do that. Russo <laughs> wasn't there yet, so they yeah, couldn't yeah, quite get over the line. I think he was writing WF magazine at the time. He was, yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't in the creative room yet, right. so. Yeah, <clears throat> don't worry, folks. We'll be talking about PMS in about five years. So yeah, give us. We'll we'll get there. We'll get there and more, folks. Trust me. PMS is a group. Is a name of a wrestling group, by the way. I'm not making a. I'm not making a joke. Well, that's. that's a, a I mean, thing. that's one of his favorite plays, right? Oh, Naming yeah. a wrestling group and having the the acronym. He loves it. Mm-hmm. He loves it. What an adult he is. What a. Oh what yeah. A, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you do these shows, folks. You think what you wonder if you're a little bit immature, and then you talk about some of Russo's ideas, and you go, well. <laughs> We're gonna be edgy, okay? Bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. We're gonna be edgy, bro. I I always hope that people realize that when Matt and I go full bro, we're we're like absolutely trying to be ironic with that because Russo, he says it after every sentence, and it's an incredible bit because he's not doing a bit at all. You know, like he does it after everything he says. He concludes with bro. It's incredible. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna assume this Sable Marlene stuff is not. Uh, not high art, Oracle. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah, it's it's. <sighs> Goldust and Mero have some good matches, you know. Once I'm again, sure. Mero, but like this angle was Sable's just look. She was incredibly over as a babyface in '98, yes. and 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 we'll and we'll get on that. But she just did not have the ability to emote and perform in any sort of no. believable uh, or or, or a convincing way. Yeah, very limited performer, right? Yeah, she, just, you know, she wasn't even that bad of a she wasn't that bad of a valet. No, but she's just there's not a lot she of just, yeah, she just there's just not a lot of character to her, you know. Not a lot of strings to her bow, mm-hmm. right? Let's put that way. Yeah. Um uh, so, quite the opposite is Mick Foley. Where, where, whereas, whereas Terry Reynolds actually had a lot of range. Certainly, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um she, she had three different, you know, Marlena was a different character from I mean, let's be honest. This is what the, her character was called—the horny she devil. To, mm-hmm. uh, um, to uh, Alexandra York, you know, which was which was obviously much different. So she 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 actually had a lot of range, but Sable not so much. Kind of staying in that lane. Um, Sunny, you know, in the notes you mentioned about her kind of continued popularity. She was a much more dynamic performer. Mm-hmm. I think it's better to say, yes. right? Very yep. very capable promo and personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's getting more and more over. We'll talk us through the latest with Sunny. Yeah, she's just. Uh, this was the year where, like, you know, it's always in a Wikipedia article. And it's always brought up, like, it's brought up in her Hall of Fame video years and years ago now. Um, but uh, she was like the most downloaded woman on in '96 on the internet. Yeah. You know, on on on, on AOL. Um, obviously, uh, um, very popular with the men at the time. Um, and just just a very charismatic performer. Good promo. Uh, great, great, great energy. Could could could. You know, did a really good job of interacting with a lot of different types of personalities and characters. Um, she was just she was just a strong overall performer. Um, the interaction she has with like Vince are incredible because Vince is just <laughs> this <laughs> the, the like the oh it's just so ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's cringe, but it's hilarious at the same time. Um, but yeah. Uh, Really, really strong performer. Um, this is basically her peak. Like this, this, this period is really her peak. Um, things start to take a downturn with her, um, uh, you know, drug abuse and whatnot. Uh, and and ninety seven, ninety eight, unfortunately, and things yeah, have I think uh, a obviously industry. gotten a lot worse uh, in recent years. But yeah, um, <clears throat> political elements at play there too in terms of oh, Sol yeah. Lu just talking about I think also right in terms of his yeah. creative influence and he's kind of I don't think they were the best uh, kind of you know creative and uh, talent marriage ever Russo and Sonny either, which I think made things <laughs> right. weird um, yeah it's a shame I mean when we do this show we generally just talk about that time because otherwise there's so many different things to kind of so many hurdles right like we just talked about mm-hmm. a minute ago like obviously but Sonny is it's, it's unfortunate, man. Um, mm-hmm. Because 
it's really impossible to watch her at this time and not kind of, even if you don't intend to do it, think ahead. It's just, it's tough. It's tough to do with yeah. a lot of people. It is absolutely is. Um, it's it's a moment in time. You know, it really, really is. Mankind and Taker, their feud is is rolling here, and uh, they take best angle of the month for WWF with their brawl in your house. Uh, this is obviously a famous pair, and I remember we talked about this last time. Um, this feud and this combination will go on for some time in some form or fashion, but how is their feud looking here in July? Oh, right dude, the angles they do are fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, this is – okay, so, again, I, I'd rather not leave my page and then – great. Mm -hmm. So, like, if, if – <laughs> here I am, like, here we are working, doing, <laughs> doing backstage stuff live on the air as usual. Um, but, uh, like – what was the step of the international incident gold dust taker match was it was it a casket match was it like um, a, was it like a it was like a no the casket match is a uh is it boy of dog right okay yeah you might be right about that okay let me fold this up or i think is this the one where mankind comes out of the ring they do the oh, i'm not sure because i know the the coffin match the casket match is the one where mankind's in the Deal, right? Isn't mm -hmm. that the deal they do? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, and it's awesome. Um, yeah, it rules. But they do, but they do something again here. I think mankind comes out of the ring. It's a wrestler. It's like a this like match a is a straight singles match, and it's a DQ finish. So maybe the he's the finish. Yeah, I think it's the one where mankind pops out of the ring. There's probably something in the event where, like, I think he crawls out from underneath the ring. Yeah, comes um, up through underneath the ring. Yes, comes up through yes, the you're ring. right. You're right. And, Absolutely like, right. Yeah. It's awesome, and like they have this great brawl. It, it fucking rules, man. This this feud is awesome. Like it goes on a little bit too long after Buried Alive, but even then, like their Survivor Series match is fine, and and their no DQ match on Raw before its time in December is really good, and, and of course we'll cover that. But th this feud is just like it's it big, kicks ass, man. Like it's an and awesome feud. It obviously establishes Mick in the WWF as a top as like a big star, a big name, mm -hmm. but I think it's a real. Um, it's, it's a big one for Taker, too, I think, in terms of allowing mm. him to do different... Because the dynamic with Taker always was, you pair him with a big guy, which is a good is good for the poster, but bad for the match, right? <laughs> yeah. Or you pair him with a little guy who can do the bump for him, but it's always, you know, the guy's running. Right. Foley was this kind of middle ground, right? Because he's insane. Mm. Mankind is, a, is an insane character. So you can match Taker in that regard, but he's also one of the most ridiculous bump takes in the history of the business. So he could play the little yeah. guy in that regard. So it's a great matchup. I mean, I get why Mick can't, you know, I, I get yeah. why Mick, you know, basically shuffles around now. It's tough, bro. Because this dude, holy shit. Mm -hmm. The yeah. shit he was doing. Listen, watch 15 Mick Cactus Jack matches from 92 WCW and then watch, you know, this Taker Foley feud. And, and, and you're thinking... A 96 and you're thinking about all the years in between that and before the 92 and after 96 what the fuck dude because it isn't just the, the big abuse he does yeah. on his body and like i i ain't gonna lie okay this is it, it gets it gets complex it's you know it's 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 a complex discussion i pop for it you know i pop for yeah. the big bumps i like it but holy shit man like and it isn't just the big the big kind of like highlight real stunt bumps. It's like the way he does everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the best example of who Foley was as a worker is the step steal, right? Where he always mm -hmm. takes the steps that way and fucking yeah. flips and it's just there's no reason to I do mean, that. Like, <laughs> imagine like imagine being like fifty seven year old Mick Foley right now. And how your hips and your knees yeah. In your he's lower lumbar, more, right? As of late, I think he's talking about it a lot more in yeah. terms of like in your shoulders. I mean, how yeah. like, ugh. Not to mention his brain matter. Mm -hmm. God bless him. Yeah. Um, just good lord. And look again. I'm always gonna pop for the concrete bumps, man. I'm always gonna pop for him taking a fucking head over heels bump over the guardrail against Paul Orndorff at Super Bowl '93. You know. That match is nuts. Oh, it's insane. That's the one where he takes a like flat back on his head and Tony Schiavone just goes, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, never forget that like Bischoff's 
ongoing explanation of Foley being done in WCW was he was an insurance concern. <laughs> Which, like, obviously Bischoff's, like, full of shit, son of, but the fact that that's believable says a lot about who Mick was as a wrestler, right? He was, like, he was, he was a danger to everyone involved. Couldn't be trusted. It's like, <laughs> yeah, man, you're probably right. Like, Could you imagine time. Bischoff in there, like, Ted Turner, and they're watching fucking the Nasties versus... <laughs> Cactus and who was it Sullivan with with Dave Schultz yeah. out there refereeing? And they're out there doing like hockey tackles and fucking. Well, that's the thing too. The, the agent in was so loose in WCW that he could do whatever the fuck he wanted, really. Right? Yeah. No one even knew what was going on. Um, and look, to be clear, they let him do what he wanted in WF, but at yeah. least they were aware of what he was going to do in WF. In WCW, it was like, "What's Mick doing?" You know, he's he's Mick, man. He's um. I mean, he also tells the story about the Vader match. He like. Actively intended to get hurt so he could retire, right? And cash his yeah. Lloyd's of London thing. Yeah. Fuck. Come on, bro. You could have just lied like everyone else did. <laughs> Constructing a match so he could have his back destroyed. Titanic was the Lloyd's of London guy, wasn't he? A bunch of guys were, right? Hulk was, I think. Or was it Animal? Might have been Animal. I think it was Animal. Animal, Hennig, Rude was one. Because at the end of Rude's. Um, the end of Rude's time in WCW, he was trying to get Bischoff to pay off his uh, his Lloyd's of London deal. Oracle looks to be back. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Lloyd's of London guys, nonetheless. I think so. Um, I think I'm back. Yeah, yeah. I, I okay. Hennig was on there though, right? Or, or yeah, yeah, Hennig was yeah for sure. I mean, Hennig's back was yeah. bad. Don't get me wrong, was... but I also think he was milking that sucker for a little while too. Yeah, well, it's also just you know, look, God bless the guys, right? They were they rode their do their thing, but there was yeah. definitely some shenanigans. What I was yeah. saying when you dropped that Oracle was famously Rude. You know when Rude went back to WCW in 98, mm-hmm. 97, 98? He was trying to get Eric to pay it off, right? And yeah. Eric was like, no, absolutely not. So he was just kind of stuck. That's when he tried to fight in fact, He was going to do like an MMA fight before he died. Oh, God. Yeah, he was training. Yeah. yeah. He's a interesting character. Um, speaking of interesting characters, we have a Jerry Lawler, Jake the Snake, Robert's view. <laughs> Certainly interesting characters. How's that thing going? Oh, <laughs> okay. Lawler can find any sort of reference to alcohol joke. Yeah. I mean, just every alcoholic joke he can think of, he he makes terrible. One of the worst feuds ever. I'm not even offended by it because, and I'm someone who has alcoholism all in my. I'm not even offended by it. It's just so stupid. Yeah. Not to say that, and I'm sure it was very offensive to other people, and understandable oh, sure. stuff. But it was just such a stupid, stupid. Wrestling is so obsessed with this shit, bro. It's yeah. horrible. It's like, you know, and of course, it didn't help Jake any, Matt. You know, no. made it worse for him. Look what happened to Jeff Hardy when they did this shit with yeah. you know Joe and Sheamus and other people that would just make over a story over about your horrible, you know, addiction. He's just, awful. And it's so self-destructive for these guys. Right? Like, if if I'm a, if I'm a, I know it's hard. I I I, I well, I can understand that it would be hard. But like, mm-hmm. I, I I hope there's somebody out there who's brave enough because addiction is very hard. And 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 like, yeah. when you're when you're finally getting back in the ring, you want to just take whatever you can. You know, of I, course, I, yeah. I can sympathize with that. But like, I hope there's somebody who's been like, I ain't doing that because. I, I don't know what yeah. I just hope we get to a point where like they aren't asked, you know. I think it's just awful. Yeah, I like, know. There's no reason to even ask. It's like I mean no. the Jeff stuff was what 2021, 2020? Yeah. Like fuck, man, what are we doing? It's just yeah, it's awful. And I and there are certain stories you can tell and they can be cathartic. This needs to be left, and the fact that it's still a thing we kind of see happen at times is awful. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, I'm for look, we don't need to get into it, but Jeff is the most ridiculous example because they've done it to him over and over oh, and they oh, always just say he's fine with it and it's like it doesn't matter if he's fine with it he's not you shouldn't do this man like we've learned no. our lesson with this shit it's no no it's, it's ridiculous um yeah nonetheless we have some incomings you mentioned warriors leaving we have some incomings we have Farouk we have Crush and we have Freddie Joe Floyd which oh. is an incredible fed name for Tracy wow. so uh God, what we got? Let's go through those one by one. Let's start with let's start, let's start with Freddie Joe Floyd. Let's start there. Tracy's As, mother's great worker, but Jesus Christ, Freddie Joe Floyd! What a terrible gimmick! Insane. He was relegated to superstars 
you know, would occasionally show up on on Raw to be a job guy, mm-hmm. just a perennial jobber. He was literally signed a job, you know. And I get it, Tracy. Tracy doesn't fit in WWE, yeah, yeah at yeah. any point. But and he was excellent. In WCW he was excellent in ECW. You know, we'll definitely talk about the F, the, the 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 new FBI. Tracy's a hoot, yeah. One of my all time favorite acts. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, just just a stupid, stupid gimmick. Yeah. Um, um, how is Crush doing here? Well, uh, they make they, they do a play on he gets a, he goes to jail or gets arrested for something, right? And yeah. like like for shoot, right. and they and they play on that, and he comes back with face tattoos, you know, prison tats, and all this horse shit, and braids, and Looking like a, you know, stereotypical. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, you start yeah. this show. And Clarence and Mason is his. We we had this with this sort of like triumphant discussion about the NWO, you know, <laughs> and, and and as the further we got into the show, the more we were reminded of how what wrestling usually is, you know, like yeah, this is great angle, and then as we went on, it's like yeah, and then this happened with Sandman, and then there's this like that's wrestling, brother. Um, a different kind of stupid is Farouk's uh, presentation here upon signing to the WWF. This is, of all of the looks they've given a guy and gimmicks they've given a guy, the initial Farouk one is one of their worst the ever. It has to be, right? It's, it's awful. For a guy with that look to dress him like this, what the fuck I mean, were they doing? Farouk is a badass dude. Yeah, man. You don't need no fuck. I mean, to put a helmet on him like he's a fucking yeah. glass. Oh. And the color. <laughs> The color of the damn thing, so it wasn't so just that. Embarrassing and just it's so terrible. Awful. He was and the world champion. Sonny. And Sonny, Sonny's great, but that was not a great pairing. No. And Farouk finally comes to do his own at the end of the year. And listen, especially 97 NOD Farouk fucking rules. It might be his best movie. work, honestly. His promos are incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Like he is outstanding. Uh, in 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 that role, um, this plays this plays it so well, but this Farouk Assad shit was fucking terrible. And of course, he attacks Ahmed Johnson, and they did the angle where he busts, you know, hurts Ahmed's kidney, and which killed Ahmed's career. I'm glad you brought up Ahmed Johnson. I don't know if I've told you, you know, Bob Robert O'Neill on this show. Yeah. He he said something to me, or I couldn't believe it. He goes, Ahmed Johnson. He goes. He was the Kurt Angle before Kurt Angle. Have you ever heard such all shit in all your I mean, what kind of lunatic would kind of that kind of thing? You know, it's insane. Is Where it because he... the Rolling Germans? Must be. It's the only comparison you can make, really, right? I mean, it's got to be something. I don't know, man. I don't know where he gets this stuff from, Oracle. But nonetheless, carry on. <laughs> um, <laughs> hard, to, hard to follow up on that. But um, for, for Farouk Assad... Terrible. terrible, just Awful. terrible, just like a living, breathing encapsulation of everything they were getting wrong at this time. Like, how do you overcomplicate Ron Simmons like that, man? It's insane, <laughs> um, ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. What would you? How would you kind of surmise that month for WWF? A good month. I mean, they didn't win any of the weeks, but was it more just steady? Kids holding, just kind of holding steady. Power? Like they were clearly getting yeah. their ass kicked. Yeah, but like it wasn't like necessarily the doldrums or anything, right? Um. I'm in December '96 now, and that like the main event. I don't know if you're familiar with it. We'll talk about the main event of its time. Oh yeah, good yeah. shit, man. Mm-hmm. The players they have involved. Oh, you yeah. can feel it. You can feel it heating up. It's like it's oh, starting yeah. to take shape. Yeah. yeah, I think this summer stretch it feels like they're lacking an identity almost, right? Yeah, and they kind of yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they are like Sean's, you know, pushing pushing on through as a champ, but they don't really. There's no like cohesion, yeah, sort of story and the mankind ang- or the mankind taker stuff angle <laughs> thanks bobby <laughs> the, mankind, the mankind taker stuff is, is excellent but it's like there's still no sort of driving you know brett's return really is yeah. that is that sort of driving force that they needed to kind of pick up steam but absolutely it's, it was just it was kind of average month for them most mm-hmm. of the, like you said just kind of steady the momentum will will swing back and forth eventually, but I think for the next few months we're going to be very much focusing on that first portion of this program of WCW, which makes sense. It will definitely turn mm-hmm. the other way before long. So um, there it is, folks. July 1996, incredibly significant 
I hope we kind of did the NWO deal justice and everything else that came with it, of course. But um, lots to going on, man. Lots going on. And as you said, Oracle, you've kind of got far, you know, far enough into this that mm-hmm. we should be able to get these next few out relatively consistently, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking, you know, we'll probably get. Uh, I want to try to do at least one episode a month. Yeah. So, like, uh, I don't want to get all the episodes out of the way and then me be like, right, yeah. wherever. Just, so we'll probably mm-hmm. do one. You know, I think we'll probably do Grin Grappler in two weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah, for for Paul White, God bless. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll probably do the next Tuesday, the first Tuesday of March. Maybe right. we'll, maybe we'll do uh, August ninety six. Works for me, brother. Works for me. Um, always a great time, folks. We had a you know we had a few different technical difficulties, but I think we got, we powered through pretty well. Right? Yeah, right. it's frustrating. I think I think it's watchable. I think it's fun. Oh, more than yeah, certainly. The good thing was it would break up, but then it'd be completely fine. So right. For the most part, you were totally fine. It helped when you just kept talking when when you yeah. you know you know you 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 recognize the. Uh, I've the made some towns. Of... I've made some towns before. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've been to the dance. Those days. Those days. <laughs> I'm going to leave it up to the chat to decide what the dance is, but I've been to it. I've been. I've seen it. Um, but no, we had it. We had a great, great time. Um, <laughs> Aids through the chat. <laughs> Factual. Paul White, coming soon, folks. A couple of weeks away. Uh, we need to look at our match line up for that, by the way. I'm, I'm completely lost. I need your help. We'll do that afterwards. All right. Yeah, Oracle, yeah. any final thoughts, any plugs, any promotions, mate? anything you want to put out there before we, before we wrap, mate? Uh, join the fellas on uh, – on, on uh, well, first of all, join uh, Joe and Jay Shell uh, on Thursday afternoon. Uh, was it 4 p.m.? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, I'll be going to see Ant-Man. Uh, oh. But uh, join 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 the fellas uh, on uh, oh, well, dynamite live live viewing right? Not this week. Not this week. Usually okay. correct, but not quite this week. Okay, but, okay. Yeah. So, but but again, join. <laughs> I'm, I'm keep remembering these shows. Join 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 the uh, uh, the boys on uh, Thursday night mm-hmm. for the for the flag uh, for the flagship number seventy eight. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah, uh, that's insane. <laughs> Um, yes. uh, I will, uh, I will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I, I'm hoping to make, make, make an appearance. Uh, I might not do the whole, uh, the whole shebang next, next, next Thursday, not this Thursday, mm-hmm. next Thursday, but I, I'm sure I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll pop my head in. Yep. Um, uh, I'll bring, I'll bring more Oracle and not, and not, and, 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 uh, not, not the other guy. <laughs> Bro, look, we, I'm really glad on Thursday. <laughs> We like we actually had a really productive sort of yeah. session, right? And we yeah, all and come then, out of it. You know, and I shared some text messages later that yeah, night. Yeah, it was good, man. We, you know, it was good. I, I, as I said to you a million times, I wish we didn't do it all on the air, but right. we most of it we did after, which was good. But we did get that line, which I very seldom put myself over for a one quote, but he wanted Oracle when he got Devin. He's one of the he's one of the best things I've said on any show. That and I'm, you. dude, he was he yeah. lost it when you it said was that. The, Someone on um, I think Reese on Discord said it was like I, I want the old Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least we got a good pop out of it. But I think yeah. we're all <laughs> happy we know where we're at now. And like the one thing, because Matt and I kind of talked on Sunday about like where we were, where we want it to go. And it's important to note this as you just kind of put. It, it's like you can always there will always be the chance that you show up on Thursdays. It's just there's a lot less pressure. Mm-hmm. You, like your yeah. book. Right, it's like yeah. Yeah. I want to be on there. I'm gonna uh, be on. You know, I'm I'm not gonna be on every Thursday. I'm not gonna yeah. be on all night every you know Thursday, yeah. but I'm still gonna be around, folks. You know, it's not like yeah. I'll, I'll be around doing you know, yeah. as as we'll get to, and 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 I'll be promoting here heavily in a minute. You know, Sundays. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah. for for a big block on Sundays now, we're having a big weekend block. Absolutely. Um, but uh, so of course this weekend is the Elimination Chamber. Um, we're revitalizing. Revamping, restructuring, uh, reforming. Yes. I'm doing my best, Joel Gertner impression. I guess I very Joel, very Joel, <laughs> uh, and and returning, <laughs> uh, Fed Dead Redemption. Absolutely. Um, with Bobby and I as as co-host, and Joe will uh, will kind of dab in and out whenever mm-hmm. he uh, whenever he wishes. Um, hopefully, uh, you uh, you you show up Sunday, Joe. Are you are you, you going to be around? For, for, I think so because I intend to watch the show. The only I'm. Yeah. I'll probably watch it on delay, but we have time because we're later on Sunday. Oh, so I'll, I'll try my best to be there. We got yeah. plenty. So uh, I want to I want to be as clear as possible about our Sunday block going forward. So mm-hmm. uh, Bob, you know, Bobby and I will co-host Fed Dead. 
um, after Fleet Week. So yeah. Fleet Week will start at 5 p.m. Eastern, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely correct. Uh, yeah. as, as usual on Sundays. And then Bobby and I will follow up, give or take, around 6.30. That's kind of mm-hmm. our scheduled time. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if Fleet Week ends at 6.09, we won't start till 6.30, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if it ends at 6.37, we'll start at 6.50 or 6.55 yeah. or whatever. So it, it'll be kind of it, – it'll be one big block where we cover both – both the big two and and uh mm-hmm. i think that'll be a neat kind of way for us to cover the week in wrestling and and give us give our platform a way of uh kind of doing that coverage that i think we've always been kind of wanting to do uh and, sure. and we're going to work on the formatting of that um and, and such and i think i think it's going to help us uh help us build you know build you know build ourselves up a little bit in terms of uh not necessarily in you know not you know not necessarily in Bobby and I's case in a journalistic way, but in a, you know in a critical way, and 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 mm-hmm. and, and I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for it. I, I'm I'm excited for Sunday. A big big time uh, elimination chamber review. It's a huge huge show. A stacked and loaded show. There's going to be some big matches, big angles. I'm sure taking place, and and we'll have lots to talk about. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a big time. And of course, um. You know, it's going to be a big block. You know, you know, big two to three hour block. We're going to have uh, going forward on on Sunday evenings uh, to kind of wrap up everybody's weekend. I'm excited to do it. I'm excited, man. I mean, I've seen with Fed Dead that there's definitely a size of our audience is not only interested but engaged by that content. And we've seen mm-hmm. that at times. And you know, like it's always been a thing of just trying to get into a rhythm with it, right? Like we had a really nice run last summer. I remember when it was like Monty would join us and Jack would hop on, and we were mm-hmm. kind of. You know, and it's like, as you said, when I see the stuff, I will join. I, you know, I don't watch the shows closely enough to join every week. But when I see it, I'm more than happy to join. And there's a lot of good stuff right. going on. And more than anything, they're red hot right now, brother. I mean, look at them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ricochet matches are doing yeah. 2.7 million viewers. Yeah. I mean, this is a crazy it, it, time. It's mania season. It's the hottest they've been. And let's be honest, it's the hottest they've been in years. Since years. in five years, right? Yeah. Like probably hot. Really, that's the hottest they've been. Well, I think it's hotter. Yeah. It's the hottest they've been since Mania 30 with the Brian yeah. run, right? And yeah. even in some ways, it might, it might be even a little bit hotter than that. I know that's... that's no, I agree. It, it's, yeah. um, Oracle's just yeah. left the building momentarily. Yeah. Hopefully, will be coming back here shortly. Hopefully. But um, I did not see the Cody Sammy segment. Yeah, I, will, I will watch it. Though, definitely. You're back, mate. Yes, go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a super hot promotion and uh oh uh one one more tidbit about the Sunday block. So on on uh so for example on Revolution Sunday uh in in, yeah. in a couple of weeks, Bobby and I'll probably go on at about three. Um mm-hmm. you know, about yeah, you know, but about about three in the afternoon, three you know, three three, three thirty, uh, you know, to give yeah, folks time kind of flip, for the big right? you know, yeah. for the big show. So mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> that's that's you know, that'll only happen a couple of times a year, but that's that's relevant because it's 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 coming up pretty soon. It's but uh, yeah, uh, so you know, usually it'll be six thirty or so for us, and and you know, you know, following immediately following Fleet Week, and that'll be our big block to cover uh, the big two, uh, kind of absolutely. a big three hour block on Sunday evenings. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I think when we we get done here, Bob, I think he's going to join us. We're going to kind of talk that through. So I want to reiterate what Saint you said, Derek, about you know we kind of want to give it its own real identity in terms of format and structure. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think we've got some, we've got some cool stuff lined up. So do join the fellas on Sunday. I hope to be there on Sunday, but um, join them every Sunday. Um, this Sunday will be a more traditional show, of course, right? It's a paper review. You, mm-hmm. know, you guys know what you're getting there, but beyond that, we hope to kind of keep things fun and fresh. And uh, there's a lot to talk about in WWE. So I think you guys are going to have a, a hell of a time. So, um, and also, you know, Oracle and I will share the screen for this show, for Grin Grappler, for whatever other whole shit we come up with along the way. Like, it's, you know, it's... Uh, it's we standard. we did have some people ask about it. I, I don't want to speak for Joe, but I, it's an mm-hmm. unfortunate no, I think, just because of our schedule and, and kind of timing and stuff. But there will not be a... Uh, uh, a uh, I, th- I, I think it was Cody who asked a uh, Elimination Chamber. Uh, yeah. A, a best of the decade. It's actually one of my favorite pay-per-views and... No Way Out slash Elimination Chamber is actually mm-hmm. historically an interesting pay per view because it's like a top, it's like one of the five or six biggest shows of the year every year. In WWE. Yeah. It's always a massive show, but 
Um, maybe that's something we can we can do next year. Um, yeah, I think you know, so. I know, I'm I, know that's, I know that's a ways way down the road, but no, I'm with you. I'm with you. It, it was kind of a it was it was it was a good question, Cody. But um, it was, and, and I'd love to. Do it. And the, one of the issues was, you know, obviously you haven't got as much material for, for the big four, right? Clearly. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at doing sense what you just kind of said of that like February pay per view and treating it like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what I was saying deciding the decade is we're obviously going to do WrestleMania. Um, that goes without saying. Oh, After yeah. that, there's going to be some different spins on the format. There's some stuff that I already have worked on and I've got ready to go. So, like for example, deciding the decade Intercontinental Champions is a show that we're going to do at some point oh, where we we go 90s 2010s. And we look at the, the you know the signature reigns of the IC title, who is the best champ, so and we rank it in that regard. Stuff like that's gonna be coming in. So deciding the decade is not necessarily about a show so much as it is um, you know, just looking using that as a format to look at different parts of wrestling history. So there's some different stuff we have lined up. Um yes, I did see I do remember this. I do remember the chamber deal. Um yeah, there's there's a few different things. WrestleMania main events would be cool. We'll kind of dig into that, you know. I've, I've got some it. ideas on that 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 that, that we'll talk about in our in our post show meeting that will that go. we'll address at some point. But uh, yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of stuff you can do with that, right? A lot. Of stuff oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there you go, it, folks. It just came to my head now, but I'm not gonna. I don't want to. Beautiful. You know, we gotta we gotta tease the the audience. Mm-hmm. Up. I will also note. So before we wrap here, so as you said, you plugged everything beautifully, Oracle. Um, one other thing: keep your eyes open, folks. Stay tuned in at Late Night Grin. Matt and I are working on something very specific that we mentioned on uh, Sunday. So in the land of fantasy booking, Matt and I will be returning soon. So stay tuned at Late Night Grin. And uh, much going on, Oracle. We don't slow down over here. I mean, we're, go- wow. we're moving at a breakneck speed. You know, it is what it is. But um, but we're, we're having a hell of a time. So follow Oracle at King Motive H, as you see there under his name. Follow myself at Joe Holbert at Late Night Grin for updates on one of our many programs. Um, we will see you maybe not tomorrow, but definitely Thursday for a couple of shows there. So keep grinning. Oh, how we appreciate you and enjoy this outro folks. Keep grinning.